Okay, so I'm going to do another video on a, an example kind of paper three question. Um, this is for the IB high level analysis approaches, first examination 2021. Um, the paper three, they're going to be kind of investigative kind of questions um, where you're kind of using and applying the mathematics that you already know. Uh, I've put together kind of a list of 13 examples of kind of questions that I think uh, could come up or like uh, show the sorts of maths that you're going to need to, to look at. Uh, you can download these uh, by following the link uh, underneath. Uh, I'm going to have a look at this one here. So I, I made this one uh, rotating curves. Uh, I think this is a nice example of the sort of kind of a way that an investigation is going to progress. Um, you, you, you're being introduced to new ideas. You're hopefully discovering something new. Um, but the maths should be accessible to an HL student. Um, so here we go. Um, rotating curves, 40 marks. Um, yeah, so let's let's have a go through this. Uh, first one, uh, two marks, uh, just tells us to to rotate the line y equals zero. Uh, we're going to rotate it theta radians, anti-clockwise about the origin, and then we want an equation of the new line in terms of y, x, and theta. Um, so, I mean, how do we start this? I mean, always start with some sort of sketch. So here we go. Here's my sketch. There's my line uh, y equals zero. It's got a length, you know, let's just, you know, let's cut off a little bit of it so it's got a length of A. And then if I've rotated it theta degrees um, anti-clockwise, it's now got, uh, well, it's still got a length of A. But you can see, hopefully you can see that we've got a right angle triangle. And therefore this is A sine theta. This is A cos theta. This is still A. Now, how do you find the, the equation of a line? Well, it goes through the origin, so the plus C is going to be zero. And then the gradient of this is going to be a sine theta divided by a cos theta, which is uh, tan theta. So therefore, we get this equation here. So y equals tan theta. That's the gradient bit you know, um, times by x. So this actually allows us to rotate uh, a line um, that, that starts as a horizontal um, and rotate it you know, 360 degrees um, around, around 0, 0. Okay, so that's the first bit. So we're, we're, we're playing around with the idea of rotation. Um, the next one is that we actually think about rotating uh, a coordinate point AB. Uh, we're still doing the same sort of idea, but we're not rotating the line anymore. We're rot just rotating a point. Uh, and we do actually have some parametric equations. Now, all parametric equations are is that, like, you know, if we know what theta is, we can stick it in here and we get the x-coordinate. If we stick it in here, then we get the y-coordinate. Um, so here we go. So we rotate the point one one anti-clockwise pi over six pi over four pi over two. So we start off with uh, a is one and b is one. So that's this thing here. Um, and then so for the first one, well I'm just going to stick in pi over six in here, and then pi over six in here. And let my calculator. I mean it's a calculator paper, so I can just let the calculator do the work for me. So there we go. When a is one, b is one. There's my ones, there's a pi over six. I'm gonna get my x coordinate is this, my y coordinate is this. And then I'm gonna do exactly the same for uh, the other two. Um, when it's pi over four, I stick in pi over four here, and I get these coordinates, x and y. And when it's pi over two, I stick them in and get these coordinates. Now, I was slightly lazy here, I should really write it as a coordinate. It says give your answers coordinates. So write this as a coordinate pair, write this as a coordinate pair, and write this as a coordinate pair. Okay, so we're now exploring, oh, how do we rotate a point uh, around the origin? Um, it says draw a sketch of your points. Um, you might kind of spot what's happening, but hopefully with a sketch, it becomes a little bit clearer. We started with the point one, one. We then had a point that kind of ended up here, and that was a pi over six rotation. And then this was, uh, was it a pi over four rotation? which gets us to here, and then a pi over two rotation. So you see that 90 degree rotation took us from one, one to minus one, one. And you can kind of possibly see that idea. It kind of makes sense as well. Basically, we've, we've got a, a, a circle. You know, it's basically going to locus the points of a circle. You can see it clearly, obviously, if we, if we plot it accurately. We're, we're in a circle. And again, you can kind of see from, you know, by this point here, we can actually see the radius of this circle. You know, the radius from the center to the edge is root 2. And again, you can see it from this, the length of this line here is, you know, from Pythagoras 1 squared plus 1 squared square root, um, again, root 2. Okay, so this is what we're getting. So the, the locus of points for this rotation 
again, should make sense if we're rotating around zero, zero, it's going to be the circle with this radius. Okay, so now we're actually going to uh, potentially prove this using some, some trigonometry. Uh, we're given a, a clue about what to do next. Square both equations. Okay, so let's square this equation. Um, and let's square this equation. Uh, clearly, if we square this side, we get x squared. If we square this side, remember, we're going to do a cos theta minus b sine theta all squared. So it's basically a, a double bracket. Um, so this thing squared is a squared cos squared theta. This squared is b squared sine squared theta. And then I've got two lots of this times this. So then that, that gives me what the first equation squared is. And equally, the second equation squared gives me something very similar. Now, what should kind of stick out is that, you know, if we add these two equations, you know, we've got simultaneous equations, we need to try and simplify things. If we add those two equations, this 2ab cos theta sine theta is going to disappear. So let's try that. So we get to this thing here. So x squared plus y squared. Um, I factorize out the a squared. So I've got uh, cos theta sine theta squared theta sine squared theta, lots of a squared, and a cos squared theta sine squared theta, lots of b squared. I mean, you're using the same sort of tricks. Whenever you see a cos squared plus sine squared, we're expecting that to kind of to be then simplifying. So, you know, this, this simplifies to 1. It's cos squared theta sine squared theta equals 1. Um, so I get this. x squared plus y squared equals uh, a squared plus b squared, uh, which, I mean, you might even know this already, or you could, you know, potentially plot this and see what happens. But x squared plus y squared equals uh, r squared is the equation of a circle with radius r. So therefore, x squared plus y squared equals a squared plus b squared is the circle, center 0, 0, radius of the square root of this thing. And again, that links straight back to this question. Here we go. We, when we had 1 and 1 here, if we did 1 squared plus 1 squared square root, we had the, yeah, the radius is root 2 on this case here. Okay, so it links back to that question. Okay, so we've proved geometrically, well, we've, we've, we've shown it geometrically, and then we've proved it algebraically, that yes, for this transformation, we're expecting to get a locus of points that's around a circle around about zero, zero. Okay, and then we expand this question. So we've kind of done it about points, we've done lines. Uh, the more interesting one is actually rotating a curve. So we can actually take any curve at all. So we can take y equals sine x, y equals x squared, y equals x cubed plus 3x, and rotate it around the origin, um, and then find out the Cartesian equation for that. Um, and the way to do it, or one of the ways to do it, is to imagine what's happening to this point. So we, we draw like a, an arbitrary rectangle. So here, here's a curve that I want to rotate. So I've drawn an arbitrary rectangle, and I take the point. So this is the point T0, and then therefore this is the point T, and then function of T. So that's kind of my starting point. Uh, and then you imagine it being rotated like on this diagram. So now you've got a theta here. Um, you see that this length here is ft, that, the height of the rectangle, so clearly that's going to become ft, or that stays at ft. Equally, that distance there is t, so therefore that distance there is going to stay at t. So this is the new kind of labelled diagram, and right, basically what we're trying to spot is uh, the new kind of coordinate point of p. So we started with p, and we want to see, well, what's happened to p? You know, because we've rotated, so this curve has now been rotated by theta degrees. Um, and then the first bit, so this is, I mean, we've labelled it already, but we kind of need to kind of show why this is true. Uh, why is this angle here the same as this angle here? Okay, now, um, probably the easiest way of thinking about this, I mean, we've got a, a rectangle, so therefore that's 90. We've drawn the parallel line here, so we get the Z angle, or alternate angle, so this is also uh, theta. And then also we've got this being a right angle, because it's in the rectangle, so this is 2 pi take away theta. And then also this is a, in a, a right angle, because this is a parallel, so therefore this, this angle here is given by pi over 2 take away this angle, which is uh, also theta. So first off, we've proved out that this is theta. Okay, we're now going to use this theta to try and prove this is the general form for rotating a curve. So can we prove this? Um, so let's have a look. So by, by using this diagram, remember I'm trying to find the x coordinate and the y coordinate. So if I use my little sketch here, if that's theta, that's going to be t sine theta uh, using sine uh, Sokotoa, and equally this is going to be t cos theta using Sokotoa. Equally, this is going to be 
FT, remember this is FT, this is FT sine theta, this is FT cos theta. So I've got the things labelled in. Let's see, well, how do you get the, the x coordinate of P? Well, this is T cos theta. And then if I, so if I do T cos theta, take away FT sine theta, that's going to take me to this point here. So all of this, take away this. So there we go, that's my x coordinate. My y coordinate is literally just going to be this answer plus this answer. So F sine theta plus FT cos theta, again, gets me to that point. So now we've got a, a general uh, formula parametrically for rotating a point and, and then therefore a curve as well. Um, okay, and then we're going to try and simplify this. So at the moment we've got it in terms of uh, this form. It's a bit easier potentially to use it in this form. So let's see if we can do this. So they've said, okay, right, uh, multiply equation 3 by cos theta and equation 4 by sine theta. We, we get a clue about what to do first. I mean, let's see why this is possibly going to help. Times that by cos theta, times that by cos theta, times that by cos theta. And then times that by sine theta, sine theta, sine theta. Again, you might notice we've got the cos squares and the sine squares appearing. And again, we've got the plus and the minuses appearing here. So let's add those two together. And we get this. Um, again, I factorized out. to So I've got the sine squared and cos squared, which again, I know is 1. And then I get something here, so y sine theta, y sine theta plus x cos theta equals t. Um, now, uh, the, the the point of this is really I can then substitute this back in here to get rid of t. So at the moment, you see in my final equation, there's no t involved, so clearly I need to get rid of this t. Well, here we go, now I've got an equation that I can substitute in instead of t here and replace it with this thing. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do next. Um, so I'm going to replace it into the second one. Um, and let's see what happens. So I'm going to replace t with this, and I'm also going to replace t here with this. Okay, so let's see what happens. Okay, so there we go. So that's the I made the substitution for t. It's kind of looking kind of horrible at the moment. Let's get expand out this bracket. Remember, this is f of this is a function, so I can't expand out this, but I can expand out this bit. Um, so I expanded this out. I got y sine squared and x cos theta sine theta. Um, and I've brought this, this over the, this side, and I've kept this on this side. So I've expanded out the brackets, brought the, 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 the y's and the, the cos's over here, and the, the x's over here, and I kept everything else over here. Okay, now this is a, the next bit's a little bit of a trick. Um, we're looking for kind of, I mean, I suppose the clue here is that we've got a cos theta here, a cos theta here. It would be nice to have a cos theta here, because then we could divide everything by cos. And again, simplify things. So yeah, the trick is here, look, if I factorize out y, I get 1 minus sine squared theta. Well, if you remember from your, or if you remember from your formula books, 1 minus sine squared theta is cos squared theta. So now I've got this form here, y cos squared theta, take away x cos theta sine theta. This is still my function thing, cos theta. Now I can divide everything by cos theta, um, which I'm allowed to do as long as uh, I'm not dividing by zero. Uh, We'll say that we're not. Um, so that, therefore, the general case is going to be y cos theta take away x sine theta equals f of this this function here, which is the form that I actually wanted to prove. Okay, so there we go. So I've now proved that this form here can be written as uh, this form here. Okay, so now I've actually got my general equation that's in a form that's useful. So let's actually use this. So the whole point of this is that now we can actually do some like nice uh, transformation. So I can get any function uh, and I can rotate it by as, as many degrees as I want or as many radians as I want. So here we go. I'm going to rotate this curve here, this line in this case. And I want to rotate it pi over 4 anti-clockwise about 0, 0. Again, it tells me what the answer should be. Okay, let's see if it, if it works. So... Uh, I'm going to take ft as the, the function here, so ft is going to be 2t plus 3. This is saying, look, I want f of this thing, so basically replace t with y sine theta plus x cos theta, so t is going to be replaced by that. And then the other thing I'm going to do is replace uh, theta with pi over 4, because that's what I'm rotating. So I get y cos pi over 4, x sine pi over 4, two lots of... Uh, yeah, because remember, I've replaced this with t, so two lots of this plus 3. Okay, and then it's a case of just, again, using my calculator, uh, cos pi over 4, sine pi over 4, they're all root 2 over 2s, root 2 over 2s. I expanded out my brackets. 
Easiest thing to do here is to notice we've got root 2 over 2's on all of those ones. So let's actually just divide by root 2 over 2. So divide everything by root 2 over 2. So obviously we're just going to do 3 divided by root 2 over 2. And we can use a calculator on that one. That's going to simplify out much more nicely. And then if I rearrange it, so I've just brought uh, all the x's over here, the y's over here, and then I've rearranged, and yet I do get what I'm supposed to get. So y equals minus 3x minus 3 uh, root 2. And just to show you what that actually looks like, here we go. So just to prove that was true, uh, there's my initial uh, straight line. Uh, there's the new line that I've just uh, plotted, what minus 3x minus 3 root 2. And using GeoGebra, there we go. We measured the angle. Yeah, exactly 45 degrees uh, pi over 4. Okay, so we proved that it does actually work. So this then allows you to rotate, um, you know, and it's rotated about the origin. Okay, by that degrees. Okay. Um, uh, the next one to have a look at is to, is to actually prove that this angle is indeed pi over 4. Okay, so let's prove that that is true. Um, we can see that uh, first off we've got uh, two equations. So we first off we've got the equation y equals 2x plus 3 and y equals minus 3x in this form. Let's rearrange it so it's both equal to 0. And so we've got the a's, so a1, b1 and c1 kind of lined up as we kind of want. So I've just rearranged those in that form. Uh, therefore my a1 is 2, my b1 is minus 1. This one my a2 is minus 3 and my b2 is minus 1. Uh, and then I just put it into my formula, so therefore tan theta is you know, all of these things divided by all of these things. Okay, uh, if you use it on my calculator, I get tan theta is 1, therefore yes, theta is pi over 4. Okay, so we've got a, a rotation of pi over 4, so the angle between the two is now pi over 4. Okay, good. And then we got the, I mean, that's it's rotating straight lines. I mean, not super exciting. Uh, a bit more interesting to actually rotate more interesting functions. You know, we can do this with anything, you know, to rotate a trigon trigonometric function. Let's rotate uh, x squared. So, like, what's the Cartesian equation of x squared when it's rotated pi over 4 radians anticlockwise about 0, 0? Okay. Um, so, this time I'm going to take ft is equal to t squared. And it's going to follow very, very similar to the, the previous one. So this time I'm going to replace t with y sine theta x cos theta. That's going to go uh, in here and then it's all going to be squared. So that gives me this thing here. So y and again cos uh, and this was pi over 4 so I know that is going to be root 2 over 2. Sine pi over 4 gives me root 2 over 2. So straight away I get to this form. Um, again if you want to expand it out uh, I'm going to get this thing squared gives me that, this thing squared gives me that, and two lots of those things times together, which nicely cancel out to give me this. Uh, let's just rearrange it, uh, because they've asked me to. I mean, that's fine form, but they've, they've, you know, the specific thing was to lick, let's have the x squareds first, and the x and the y squareds, then the y, and then the gx, so the, the xy. So there we are, I've put it into this form. And it doesn't look very nice, but but this is, you know, if you then plot this, uh, this will then actually give you uh, the, the graph of x squared rotated uh, pi over 4. And let's actually do it. So here we go. Uh, there's my original graph, x squared. Uh, you can see this is the graph that I've just plotted, this one, this horrible looking thing here. And we can see that it is rotated. And then if we want to check, let's, let's use our result from the, the very the start of this, which was that we've got, in effect, the, the horizontal line here you know, that, that this is resting on has been rotated by pi over 4. Well, how do we work out that? That's tan pi over 4x. So there's my tan pi over 4x line. And yes, we can see that it is actually uh, exactly right. So this line is now like the, it's in effect the axes have been rotated by pi over 4. So there we go. That's kind of an example of how an exploration could happen. You know, you're using new maths, you're exploring new things, but you know, it's all accessible to, a, to an HL student.